Hello, this is Shan Chandrasekhar welcoming you to another delightful part of our programming. As part of our tribute to the achievers from around the world, we have an extraordinary achiever here with us today, none other than Dr. L. Subramaniam, who is internationally well known. He is one of the greatest musicians that, that India can ever be proud of. Dr. Subramaniam has got a Padma Shri, he's got a Padma Bhushan, he's got a list of awards. He's the topmost violinist, one of the topmost in the world. Honored to receive Dr. L. Subramaniam to our program. Dr. Subramaniam, what a pleasure and an honor to have you with us. Great pleasure and privilege to be here in ATN, which you have taken it to a totally different height, you and Jazzy. Great, great pleasure and privilege to be here. Very kind of you. Sir, first of all, our hearty congratulations to you. My God, every project that you have touched has turned into gold. You have put India on a worldwide map in terms of music and international understanding. You've been the ambassador of India through music in various parts of the world. You've performed at the Lincoln Center, Carnegie Hall. You've performed at the Royal Albert Hall in London. You've performed with the biggest of symphony orchestras from around the world, the Philharmonics from different parts of the world. You have an incredible lineage. It starts with uh, Narayana Tirtha, Shama Shastri, Muttuswami Dikshadar, Saint Tyagaraja, Samba Siva Iyer, Professor V. Lakshmi Narayana, and of course, the great L. Subramaniam. Tell us about this lineage, sir. For me, uh, my father has been my guru and guide and everything. As far as lineage goes, we are very, very fortunate. I mean, you can't normally select your lineage. You can't select your guru. You can't select your father. In my case, uh, it was the greatest blessing for me that I was on that lineage of my father and uh, the whole credit goes to my father because when we all started uh, at that time, uh, my sisters used to sing, my father used to teach them. Eldest brother, El Vaidinathan, he was uh, a tremendous musician. He started a solo career. Then he wanted me to sing, father wanted me to sing because my elder brother Vaithi was already playing the violin. But then I, two years old, I had diphtheria, so they thought I might lose my voice. But the whole thing was violin at that time. Also, my father didn't want to be a wanted me to be a violinist because it was basically an accompanying instrument. And if you play powerfully or get more appreciation in a concert more than the main artist, and your career was over, literally, oh, you know, in China, always you had to be behind, you know, play less and, and not, you know, they thought it was overshadowing if you get a clap or anything. So my father changed the whole, whole thing. He said, the violin is such a beautiful instrument, complete instrument. We, in order to get the international acceptance and respect, we have to change it and develop a lot more new techniques, which should be our own, mm -hmm. not copying the Western technique. Uh -huh. So single-handedly, he worked so hard to develop all the technique and the tonalities and bring, he's always used to say, you have to bring a life to each note so that it'll, it'll make a difference, otherwise anybody can play the notes. 
he did all those things, I'm getting all the, all the glory because he's not there. Literally, I'm collecting what, what, he, what he should have got. You're being very humble. Your no, father would have been extremely proud today. Tell me about the uniqueness of your music. In the traditional classical music, you've always excelled, but you decided at some point that you would go beyond that and bridge the gap between one culture to another, between one type of music to another, and a bit of a fusion. There are more interesting segments to come, but first we'll have to pause for these messages, so stay tuned. King of this, so tell me about that. Basically, in the 70s, either there was, you know, there was Indian classical and Western classical, there was jazz and rock and pop, and they started East West uh, playing Western artists, playing with Indian artists. At that time, the Indian music was generally the Western concept was classical music, was Western music. Mm -hmm. Everything else was politely called world music. Uh -huh indirectly saying it is not classical. Mm. So that was the situation at that time. So I thought, you know, of course, we have one of the oldest, probably the most sophisticated classical system in the world. So putting under the carpet as a world music kind of uh, make, made me a little uneasy. So I thought we will create a term, global music, mm. where we interact with a lot of different artists from different genre, mm -hmm. different traditions, different mm. classical system. So I started doing few things, experimenting, and thanks to people like, you know, Richard Bach, Dick Bach, who released the earliest of, you know, M.O. Lakshmi mm -hmm. and Alek Par, Ravi Shankar, all those CDs he used to, LPs those days. Mm -hmm. he, and also he released people like, you know, uh, Crusaders, and he discovered some of the greatest uh, jazz artists. Mm -hmm. He heard me and he said, uh, why don't you write something for other artists and compose and we will release it. Mm -hmm. And you know, traditionally, if you do anything other than Indian classical, go back to India, they will say, you know, he has uh, diluted, or he has, you know, whatever that uh, mm. uh, kind of pseudo uh, purist thoughts. So I told him if I play, I was playing with Palkat Manier at that time, mm. the greatest Murthangam player yes. of all times. Mm -hmm. So we were playing our interview and I was playing. So I said, I'll do it, but I, do, I want to make sure that it doesn't get to India. <laughs> so he told me that, you know. I will give you a written contract saying that we will release it in India, the Fusion Project. Mm -hmm. If you are happy, whenever you want, mm -hmm. you can release in India. Otherwise, till you release, it won't be released. So it will be, you can own it. Mm -hmm. With that thing, I spoke to my father also. Father said, do whatever, we have to bring the Indian violin to that forefront. So anything innovative, we should do it. And also I was doing my master's in uh, Western classical composition. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things we did was started the North-South Jugalbandi with Ustad Ali Akbar Khan. Mm. Where, you know, before that only Ali Akbar Ji and Ravi Shankar used to play, Vilayat mm. Khan Sahib and mm. Bismillah Khan Sahib used to mm. play. North-North, mm. but not North-South. Mm -hmm. So me and uh, Ali Akbar Khan Sahib started the North-South Jugalbandi, Terrific. played in Lincoln Center. Different. Then I started the Global Music Concept. Well, I just did one album, we, because I didn't have a group. He said, you tell me what instruments you want, we'll put together a group. Mm -hmm. I said, I wanted a piano player, a bass player, a drummer, and a guitar. So he put together a group, went to a studio. I had Allah Rakaji play some of the things. Wow. We did an uh, Durai on Mradangam, mm -hmm. Guru Vahe Durai. I finished recording, completely forgot it was exclusively only for US and Canada. Mm -hmm. When I was touring uh, Europe, I got a call from my friend Richard Bach. Mm -hmm. 
He said, what you have done? You know what? I said, what happened? Mm -hmm. You are among the ten top uh, jazz artists. I said, this, I'm not even a jazz artist. Mm -hmm. He said, you are in the line with Herbie Hancock and Carmen McRae and all, wow. all the, some of the greatest uh, Miles Davis and people like that. Mm -hmm. He said, you should not uh, leave that. You mm -hmm. should give me five more albums mm -hmm. with whomever you want to play. Mm -hmm. So one I did with Stefan Grappoli, the greatest jazz violinist. Mm -hmm. One with Stanley Clark, George Duke, one mm -hmm. with Hubert Laws, Joe Sample, like variety of artists. Wow. So that led uh, to that direction, which was not planned. It just landed on my lap. Mm -hmm. Same thing on the orchestral thing, which was not planned. One day, uh, Richard Bach said, you know, one of my friend told a, a conductor saying that, you ah. know, this is a genius. He can write pieces mm -hmm. which will blend everything. So. I went for a meeting. He said, "There is, we have booked the music center, mm -hmm. and I have invited Crusaders Joe Sample to write a piece. Wow! Mm -hmm. And I would like you to do an orchestral piece, mm -hmm. and we will play." I said, "You know what makes you jump? You have to like the piece. Otherwise, you know, writing orchestral piece takes months. Mm -hmm. Every note, uh, if you are a composer or the whole piece, you write every each and every note of each instrument." Mm -hmm. After that, many of my friends had all their orchestral pieces in the shelf. Mm. Never heard them mm. because the orchestra didn't want to play them. Mm. He said, no, I know you are a genius. You do that, I'll play. Whatever you write, we'll play. Whatever happens. Mm. So I, first piece I started writing, I want to write violin and flute double concerto mm. with Hubert Loss. I wow. said, I want Hubert Loss. Mm -hmm. So they heard the rehearsal and they decided this piece should be the closing piece. Wow. Mm -hmm. The whole thing shifted to the ending and the my father was there at that time. Mm. He came to the auditorium, but unfortunately, around that time, a few months before my mother died. Oh, sorry. Mm. So I didn't want to play the concert. I mm -hmm. said, how can I go and play? Because, you know, mother has passed. The father said, no. You, I mean, she'll be very happy that, you know, what you're doing for the first time, taking Indian music, violin, with the, about 80, 90 people playing behind you in the situation in music center. You should go, I'm coming. Mm. So I played that in between the reaction and the ovation, between movements, mm -hmm. that completely uh, was so happy my father was there because he was my idol. Whatever he was dreaming of, I'm trying to follow that and try to do that. So that led to a lot of other orchestral composition with you know pieces like Fantasy on Vedic Shantri, Zubin Mehta, and a lot of other composers I started doing it, really? other orchestras. That's absolutely brilliant. Just for the benefit of viewers, Dr. Subramaniam was just talking about his experience. Just watch this. There are more interesting segments to come. Stay tuned.
Wow, our hearty congratulations. Thanks. Fantastic presentation. You've had interaction with some of the biggest people in the music industry from around the world, like Yehudi Menon, uh, Stevie Wonder, Jean-Pierre Rampal, and several others. So tell me about these international collaborations that you have done. About Menuhin, my father used to say when I was very young, you should go and listen to Menuhin. Uh -huh. And if you can't bring our violin to that level, to the mainstream, mm -hmm. Indian violin, mm -hmm. then we would have achieved. If mm -hmm. you're going to play house concerts in the US, mm -hmm. come back to India, practice mm -hmm. medicine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because he said, unless we do it in that level, mm. playing house concerts in the wow. US, it should not be your thing. Mm. So I stopped playing. So mm. I heard Menuhin, and but you know, at that time you were an audience, and I never met him before, but I know who he was. Yeah. He was the greatest uh, violinist of all, one of the greatest of all time. All of a sudden, one day I got a call from his secretary saying that, uh, at the time he was Sir Ehudi Menuhin. Mm -hmm. Sir Menuhin like you to come and play in Bonn for his uh, birthday celebration. A lot of great artists are performing. Wow. You have been selected from Asia and a lot of European artists are playing. Right. You will be the only non-European person right. who wanted to come and play. I couldn't believe my ears. Mm. So next day, I mean, he spoke to me. He said, I'll be very politely. Mm. Uh, he was very, very polite. Mm. Uh, with the, I mean, whatever age group doesn't matter. He used to sometimes say, maestro, how are you? Mm. He used to sign like that. Mm. He said, I'd like you to come and play. I said, it'll be my honor and pleasure. Mm. So before me, there were different people, some of the greatest piano players and mm. violinists, they were all performing. Mm. Then I went there, I sat on a carpet, you know, like a traditional thing and mm. played. As soon as I finished playing, it just leaped at that time in Helmut Kohl and all the chancellor to the live television oh thing uh -huh. was happening. Mm -hmm. For his, I think, 70th birthday celebration of many with mm -hmm. all these people. Suddenly he jumps over and knocks and says, you know, I never heard any powerful violin like this, mm. we will, we should play together. So I thought he was just saying, being a senior artist and being a, one of the very, very broad-minded person, just saying for comfort. Forgot about the whole thing. Some years later, I was asked to play in UN for the 40th year of India's independence. Mm -hmm. They said, we would like you and many men to play. Wow. I said, wonderful. Then I spoke to the Indian consulate was trying to get in touch with him, mm. they had a problem. Mm -hmm. So finally they said, can you talk mm. to him? So I left a message immediately, he calls next day. Mm. I said, sir, I mean, they would like you to perform. Mm. Uh, they have also asked me to perform, I'll play mm. Indian classical. And of course, whatever you feel like mm. playing, you should play. Then he said, why not we play together at the end? Wow. I didn't expect that. I said, mm. uh, what shall we play, sir? He said, you write a piece, I'll play. Oh. So that, that's what happened at that time. So I was thrilled. I wrote a spe specifically for that occasion for Lord Menuhin. I wrote this piece, Journey. Mm -hmm. it, at that time, it was called Shraddhanjali, Tribute to India. Mm -hmm. So we were rehearsing in the Indian consulate in New York. All of a sudden, uh, in the room, he came and said, uh, oh, I like the jibba. So finally, you know, he borrowed my jibba. Oh. And we sat, uh, he sa I said, when he was playing solo, he normally stands and play. But for the duet piece, he said, I'd like to sit with you and play. Mm. I said, oh, great. Brilliant. And in that UN concert, I was sitting, he sat, but he was holding the violin. Huh. I could not believe my ears, you know, because, or to believe that this is happening, because, you know, all of a sudden, many of is playing, and we are playing a duet. After that, we became very, very close. He became the pattern of my father's festival, mm. first pattern, mm. when I started Lakshmarana Global Music Festival. Mm -hmm because he belonged to my father's age group. Then we traveled and played in places we recorded. Wow. It's one of the most uh, cherishable moments. I want you to watch that moment with me, okay? This will bring you nostalgic memories. Yes. Okay. <laughs>
hearty congratulations. Uh, you're being very humble and modest, but when you play, you make us feel ecstatic, your music. And there is a, uh, people can go into trance almost with the kind of music that you produce. Divinity in you to be able to produce that kind of music. So God has blessed you. God bless you again with lots of years of healthy happiness and uh, lots of prosperity. And we want to keep on hearing great innovation from you year after year. So it's been an honor having you in the program with Pleasure. us. God bless you again. We'd Pleasure. love to have you back soon, very, very soon. Pleasure to be in your station. You and your wife has been visionary in creating so, so many 54 channels and spreading not only Indian culture, but Asian culture uh, throughout the Canada and you're expanding and uh, we need people like you to spread our culture. Thank you. Awfully nice of you. Again, we are Pleasure. honored by your presence. Pleasure. We'd love to have you back very, very soon. Love to be here. Thanks. Thanks.